verses 1 through 12. It says here, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All, their, what, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Interesting there, a little dispensational problem for you if you're non-dispensational. Jesus Christ is saying, yeah, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Whatever they bid you to do, that do. Is that the system we're under today? No. No. Why? What's going on? Well, this is doctrinally in the Old Testament. Up until the time of the crucifixion, you can read Hebrews chapter 9 to prove that. The New Testament starts there in Hebrews 9. It talks about this. The New Testament starts with the death of the testator. Jesus dies on the cross, then the New Testament begins. But before the crucifixion, it's all Old Testament, doctrinally. But let's continue. Verse 4, For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make raw their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, which a lot of the Jewish rabbis do that. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi, but be not ye called Rabbi, look at this, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ." But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that humble that he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Okay, um, very interesting there. And you say, well, I don't agree with that. You know, Jesus wasn't the you know the Messiah that the Jewish people accept and everything. Okay, I, I understand that a lot of the Jews reject Jesus Christ right now as being their Messiah. But let me just ask you a question: If he was God manifest in the flesh, if he truly was who he said he was, um, would he have the right to say, I'm now the only one rabbi, I'm the only father, I'm the only master? Would he have the right to say that? Oh yeah, he would. But you see there, again, this thing of Jesus Christ basically saying that he now is the rabbi. I mean, why do you need a whole system of rabbis that, that contradict each other when you have one rabbi, one high priest. I'm going to show you about this. What does the Bible teach? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. should be a pretty familiar scripture to you if you know the Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one medi mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And of course, you can read in the book of Hebrews, it talks a lot about that too. He's our high priest. Now, as a Christian, my intercessor, my rabbi is Jesus Christ. But again, you say, well, that's just Christianity. But what is Christianity? It's a sect of Judaism. It's not apart from Judaism. It is completed Judaism. That's what it is. And Jesus Christ is the final rabbi, the final master, the finer t final teacher. Okay? John 4.22. You say, but, you know, I, I still don't, don't see this thing that uh, Christianity is a sect of Judaism. Well, let's talk about the thing of sects. S-E-C-T. Uh, John 4.22 and I talked about this in one of my Replacement Theology Lies debunked videos. It says, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Okay, Jesus Christ plainly says salvation is of the Jews. Salvation comes from a Jewish Savior. This is a Jewish book. All right. That's why it's so strange to hear people who claim to be Christians attacking the Jews. It's rather weird. But um, we're not going to go to all these verses because, for sake of time, but Acts chapter 5, verse 17 talks about the sect of the Sadducees. Um, Acts chapter 11, verse 26, if you know the scripture there, the Jewish disciples are called Christians first in Antioch. So they're Jews and they're called Christians. So it's a sect of Judaism. Uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 5 talks about the sect of the Pharisees. 
So within Judaism, there are different sects. And of course, that's there today too. I mean, you have Orthodox, you have orth, ultra-Orthodox, you have Reformed, you have a lot of liberal type Jews, you know, and things. It's there. Okay? Christianity is just another one of those sects. But it just happens to be the right one. The one that is completed Judaism. The one, the Jews that are looking for this promise of being able to have their sins taken away, it's taken away, it's done away in Christ. You know, all the, the laws and everything that are contrary, that you have to do this and you have to do that to try and stay in God's good favor, you don't need to do that stuff anymore. The law is there to convict you, to show you that you are a sinner. That's there. But then, what do you do about those sins? See? Jesus Christ paid that price so that you don't have to. Acts chapter 24, verse 5. Turn there in your Bible. Acts chapter 24, verse 5. And look at this. This is interesting. It says, For we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout, all, or throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So they were calling Christianity a sect back then. Rather interesting. Turn next to Acts chapter 26, verse 5. It says here, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that afterward, or after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Paul's talking about when he was a Pharisee, and he calls it a sect. Okay? A lot of people try to, you know, kind of think of sect being like a cult or something like that. No, it doesn't have to be that. It's just a sect of Judaism would be the Pharisees. Another sect is the Sadducees. Another sect is Christianity. Christianity is Judaism. All right. And I'm not saying that all Jews are saved, that they're all Christians automatically because Christianity is part of Judaism. No, no, no. Christianity is a unique sect of Judaism. But um, Acts chapter 28, verse 22. Acts chapter 28, verse 22 says here, But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Okay, and it's talking about the Jews that were there in uh, uh, Rome. You know, he's there and these Jews are going, we don't really haven't heard, you know, a whole lot about this. We want to hear about it. You know, we'd like to hear more about this sect here. So Jesus Christ as a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi, brings in completed Judaism. He comes in and he makes a brand new branch of Judaism. Christianity is not apart from Judaism. Christianity is completed Judaism. We have something that the Jews themselves do not have. Other sects within Judaism, I should say it that way. Other sects within Judaism do not have what Christians have. But I cannot say that my salvation is apart from the nation of Israel. If it wasn't for the nation of Israel, for the Jewish people, if it wasn't for the city of Jerusalem, I would not have salvation. So, um, I'm going to be doing a study, like I said, in the future on the thing of what did Jesus bring in, what's the relationship of the Old Testament to what Jesus brought in. And uh, But if you really want to know about the relationship between New Testament Christianity and the Old Testament and what, did Je what Jesus really truly accomplished, read the book of Hebrews. I mean, it's if you're Jewish, it's written to you, to the Hebrew people. So... That will be it for this video. Thank you for watching.